the moment we went to the car and saw puttaparthi ran the writer tears came down our yeah, eyes i cried i cried like anything the minute i saw the puttaparthi sign i wept like <laughs> i said we are at home we are at home somebody left a book in my house and then one day i came and i'm looking for something to read and this book fell off the shelf it was a book about sai baba the change forever the life of dr rengachari partasarathi or parta for short the holder of two phd's in physics people used to ask me how come you can worship a living person i said why do you want to worship a dead person parta and his wife prema were aided by sai baba through the loss of their daughter in a swimming accident years ago she was exactly 10 in the water in the deep end and and she was no more after that swami came 6 months ahead into our life even though it's a big loss it was baba who saved us 100% and once again it is sai baba who is aiding and comforting parta who at 86 has fourth stage lung cancer you know whatever swami wants is going to be good for me so i left it for him so it's no problem at all for me to process this uh, lung cancer sai baba has given parta mantras to help him through all adversity one mantra is i am god i am god i'm not different from god i am that indivisible atma yeah. fear and anxiety can never touch me i have kept on repeating it over and over and over again i don't have any fear at all what a joy meeting these two high spirited and loving souls welcome to soul journeys This interview was recorded in San Jose and Coronado, California, on June 27th, 2023. It's a great pleasure to welcome to Sojourns today Dr. Regachari Partisarati. Took me a while to be able to pronounce that name. <laughs> Prima, which is a lot easier, and I'm going to yes. stick with Parta for you yes. if it's okay, doctor. Uh and Sojourns has never had a beginning quite like the one we're about to have. Will you initiate the proceedings with the prayer? Take it away. Okay. Mukam karoti bachalam pangum langa yate girim yat krupatam aham bande paramananda madavam. It's a it's a distinct pleasure. So again, welcome to both of you today. And first up, what about their very initial reaction to Sai Baba? but being a scientist you know little cranky maybe <laughs> i said it looks like a cult you really want to go there and then she said you know do this into your uh, <laughs> thing if you don't do i will do that so don't say anything about baba that's how we started she was very intense into uh, going to bhajan and baba my situation came in a strange way somebody left a book in my house it was sitting in the shelf for years and then one day i came on early morning thursday and looking for something to read and this book fell off the shelf this book was howard murphy's by the way i want to say something it was in the middle of the night yes. little early in the morning on thursday uh, and then sleep. i pulled the book and started reading by the time i read about 20 30 pages tears started coming in my eyes i couldn't contain it and i read the whole book in one sitting Oh I didn't sleep that night, so I went and told Prema, "Look, like there is an avatar in India. We should go home." And she said, "No, no, no. If there's an avatar, let us bring him here." <laughs> so that's how confident she was, and in a way, it happened. Well, and that's how we started. All of us wanted to bring Swami here. And yes, I, <laughs> of course, he's always here with us, as we ultimately find out. But that's a great story, and it's not at all that strange because I can't tell you over the course of twenty-five years with four hundred and fifty plus interviews, I've heard similar stories just like the one you shared with me. Others must not believe yeah. you when you tell them that most story. Days. Some more things I want to say about that. Many years later, I saw her not pet. I told him how grateful I am. He said, "Baba said because of his book, so many people came, and he get a lot of punyam, you know, holiness." coming back uh, i i usually sing one song to god every day and one of the song says will you come and hold my hand that's the end of the tyagaraja kriti and then i had the first dream of swami he comes and holds my hand <laughs> and right according to the prayer that blew my mind and i knew then i have something very special 
Well, you're 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 both well educated. You both have a very bright and intelligent outlooks on the course of history, and especially being a scientist, not with not just one PhD, no one, <laughs> yeah. two, two PhDs. You have a doctor's a doctorate degree in physics and one in biophysics. Biophysics, well. yes. And my question to you is, when did you, if ever, come to the point of seeing that? There's space in the world of intelligent thought to combine both the idea of God with the idea of science. I started investigating. Is it really miracles? I want to see. And one of the first place I used to go for conference, whichever city I go, I used to go. Is there any science center? I will go and visit them. And one of the best place I visited was Homer and Leela Yanks in La Jolla. And that was a beautiful experience. So there are Americans living here in California. Yes. And he is an entrepreneur. And he took a photograph. He has some connection with the satellite people. So he took a photograph of Puttaparthi. And then he put it aside. Oh, there's nothing there. But when Samuel Sandwich came to his house, he said, what do you mean? You can see Baba's face. The river outlines Baba's face. And then he showed me that. Then something strange happened. He wanted to get another copy of that from the NASA people. They could not locate one. That's the only one available, and it was published in one of the books. So yeah. that strengthened my feeling. And then I started really, really thinking about this. You know, I have some religious background. And then I said, something more than science is here. Because if you calculate the amount of energy, but Baba does materialize the rings, it's mind blowing. So I knew that it is something extraordinary. That's when I realized that I have really, really come across something. And then it is his doing that he called me. Amazing. Do you have uh, any instances, or maybe I should say many instances, where fellow scientists look askance that your belief in in the spiritual form of God in the form of Sai Baba, because many scientists don't include that in their repertoire yes. understanding. Well, after my first interview, I came to Buffalo, and then I was ready to tell everybody, here is God, come on. Sure, like most people. I realized, people used to ask me, how come you can worship a living person? I said, why do you want to worship a dead person? You know? <laughs> Uh, then I realized that Jesus said nobody is a prophet in their own country. That's true. So what I did is I used to invite, I, we started a Sai center. Yeah, there was a person called Judith Hefty who had a center for a very short time. She had to leave Buffalo, so she entered us, entrusted us with the Sai center. And we had a beautiful center at home for almost 16 years. Uh, and uh, then it was very, very good that slowly, slowly, I started something called a retreat. That is, I invited people, uh, many, many people, you know, Levin, for example, uh, and then, uh, you know, from uh, New York, uh, several people. So when somebody else comes and talks, people are ready to believe. When I talk, they don't. Slowly, slowly, the center built. And there was one time we had like 100 people went to the retreat from Buffalo. Oh, that's amazing. That's wonderful. Yes. And... Um... Prima, let me ask you if it's okay. When you came into the fold of Sai Baba, had you been raised in a family that was spiritually active? Was it something that uh, you thought you would stay with until Sai Baba came? Or was Sai Baba really brand new to you coming from relatively little spiritual background? I, I came to this country when I was 18. I don't know what is a religion actually, except the practice at home, whatever they said. Mm -hmm. So God... Uh, is the, we just worship, we don't take seriously into that heart. Only after Swami came to my life, then only I started, I was used to work for Hindu Cultural Society in Buffalo uh, as a president. And uh, I used to take all Swami's teachings, put into practice there, and it grew fantastically big. And uh, now it's the existing temple is there. So Swami, that's how Swami taught me religion. Mm -hmm. It's remained with you very strong, as I can see, too. Throughout yeah, very seriously working for that. And always I used to tell uh, my husband, I said, I do all the work and Swami doesn't 
<laughs> come in my dreams. But whereas everybody tells they have a dream. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to turn my attention now to what was mentioned at the beginning. And Prima, I'll begin with you. And that is about the sudden loss of your child in 1980. Mm -hmm. I think I heard you say from a swimming accident. How old was she at the time? She was exactly 10. Actually, uh, she was beautiful. She was went to a birthday party. And uh, I don't, we don't know what happened. I went and dropped her and came back. And the news was that uh, she was in the water in the deep end. And, uh, and she was no more after that. As a reporter over many years and having to known of human loss with children to their parents, in my own lifetime with other people, not in my family, however, I've come to the conclusion that parents never get over, never get over the no. loss of a child. Have you been able to process it in a way that's given you some peace in your heart? Sylvia? You know what? Uh, it is funny. I was always seeing other children. I was very happy. It never bothered me to see the other children or be with them and have fun with them. So I think Swami has lifted me from that grief. Yeah. So that, that I have been always comfortable, whatever happened. And 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 Parta, let me ask you too, how much did how much did your trust in Baba help you through this critical time? And yes. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent I would say, because uh, as when this tragedy happened and we were really dumbfounded that uh, some gentleman came and taught me Bhagavad Gita and then I used to give lectures on Bhagavad Gita in the Hindu temple but at the same time I was so involved with Swami and I 100% believe that Swami came six months ahead into our life just to make sure we don't go through a real real sad situation and we processed it with that even though it's a big loss it was Baba who saved us 100%. And if it's okay, Prima, I want to ask about your own personal health right now. I understand it's seriously compromised. You're not a young man anymore. You're older than I am. You're 86 years old. You appear to be in excellent health. And yet I also know that you have from uh, Savita, who told me fourth stage cancer with mm -hmm. in your lungs. If it's okay to talk about it, it's no okay. problem. So in my third interview with Sai Baba, uh, Professor Sampath and myself were the only two who were in the room. He talked about many things about my family. He knows everything. And then when I took a Padra Namaskar, he put his hand on my head and said, long life, long, long life. I, I don't know what is long life, what is long, long life. So I totally give, you know, whatever Swami wants is going to be good for me. So I left it for him. So it's no problem at all for me to process this uh, lung cancer. And also, uh, luckily for me, the chemotherapy is nothing but a pill that I swallow every day. And uh, that takes care of me. Uh, I've been doing good for nearly one and a half years now. That's just remarkable. Do you have a chance to meet with Sai Baba devotees anymore? I know you're in a different city than the city you lived in for decades. Okay. Before the COVID, we used to go without fail to the Sai Center here. Mm -hmm. But after the COVID, yeah. it's always by Zoom. Yeah. And uh, so now maybe, but I have a problem. I don't want to go where there is a crowd. Uh, crowd. Yeah. Other than that, my son never misses, my uh, youngest son never misses the bhajan. And Prema goes once in a while. Yeah. But I stay home and pray. Prima and Parta have three sons, one of whom, Sundar, had a remarkable experience with Sai Baba when Baba actually showed up in front of him in New York. When Swami was going attaining Samadhi and they were doing Arati in Puttaparthi. Yes. So we had, we had a center so many years in our house. We were in California, he was in Buffalo. So we told him, why don't you do Arati to Swami? And then he said, he did the arati, and then he was stunned to see Swami sitting in the chair. Well, so he gave him a darsan. Wait a minute. He didn't just visualize him in his mind. No, no, no. He saw him. <laughs> it wasn't a dream. He wasn't sleeping. No, no. He was, he was doing arati, and he was also Swami sitting in Swami's chair. Well, that's pretty remarkable to say that. It is remarkable, yes. Yeah. He's very intense about Baba. Yeah. Well, Baba's been gone now for a good number of years from his physical form, but those who knew him and knew of him, 
uh, have really passed the test of time and remain really powerful Baba devotees. Yes, I can tell you one thing. You know, when he passed away, it really hurt me. I mean, the, we missed his physical form, his voice, his beautiful darshan, everything. But then, four, five years later, after he passed, I had a dream uh, in which <coughs> Swami was standing under a tree. I walked by, took a Padranaska, and then he wants me to come into a building. And then I go there, there is an iron safe. He says, can you open it? I open it. Somehow I put it around and opened it. I have no idea how it happened. And then he was so happy. He said, you see, I have lots of information inside that. Make CDs and send it to everybody. I was puzzled. I, I was stupid in a way. I said, Swami, CD will cost you a lot of money. You, you mind if I'm email? He just smiled and let it go. But I'm saying that because I didn't understand the dream. After I got cancer and I left my job, I had time. Every day some song comes to me and I write. I have written about 60 songs so far. Yes, so I the CD has related to the song. That's what it is. Now I understood. That I meant to ask you, so I'll ask you now too, since you brought up the subject again. First of all, how long have you had this diagnosis of cancer? For months or a year or for how long? Uh, it's uh, 20, September 2021. During that period of time, are there any lessons, and maybe that's not the best word I could use, uh, or understanding some Baba in your heart, in your dreams, that have helped you to cope with this diagnosis? It was very simple. Baba, one place, defined who is a good devotee. He said a good devotee is one who accepts whatever happens to him is good for him. I know that, and I always, Swami, whatever you do, it's yours. I'm in your hand. Well, so that, that made it very easy for me. That reminds me of the principle of surrender, and, and Baba yes. will talk about surrender too. Tell me what you think it means for a person to surrender to Sai Baba. Surrender is simply accepting whatever happens to you is God's will, in my opinion. Prima, is the same for you? In other words, when you went through uh, the multiple losses in your life, were you able to turn it over to Baba readily? Once I was in the, with a personal interview with the Baba, I asked the Swami, we need a temple in Buffalo. There is no place to pray. And then he said, when you have a temple in the heart, temple is everywhere. <laughs> so that's when I realized that we have to keep him inside uh, in our own heart. In that interview, that that's the last one with the whole family. Uh, Swami mentioned something about my wiggling or whatever. He's but always no, he's... Nobody knows about it except she used to criticize me. And when in one dream, Baba came and rubbed my back, so it became better. So he suddenly said, you know, don't do like, like that. I already took care of it. Why do you do that? And she blurted out, Swami, how do you know? <laughs> you know can you believe that? And then he smiled and said, I have thousand eyes and thousand ears everywhere. So I was chilled when he said that. The way that's coming right from him in our room. <laughs> so another question about this, because I know more and more people, my wife Jody and I are just amazed how many of our close friends, uh, even relatives, uh, are going through uh, a very dark period of their lives with cancer, not knowing what's going to happen next. How has Sai Baba handled the prospect of fear in your life, especially at this important time now with your cancer? Okay. Uh, so Swami has said two mantras. One mantra is, I am God. I am God. I'm not different from God. I am the infinite. I am that indivisible Atma. Yeah. Fear and anxiety can never touch me. I have kept on repeating it over and over and over again. And so I don't have any fear at all. Yeah. Whatever it's happens, it's up to him. So I leave it to him. It's it's a challenge for people to believe the 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 meaning of those words that you are God, you are God, you are no different from God. You are the infinite supreme, the one reality. You are Satchitananda Sarupa. But I think what happens is he makes it easier for you to own that mantra the more you say it, the more yes, you yes, it. it becomes natural to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that's there to help too. Prima, does that help you as well? 
Uh, I just being with him, I think it helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. That's excellent. Yeah. A basic question, especially when, especially when people are confronted with difficult news to digest. How do you know that Baba is with you during times like that? Several times I would say, but I will in, recite one when my youngest son had an accident. Somebody, somebody else was driving the car and they went down to pick up the phone and the car hit the fence and the car overturned. But then my son saw Swami with his avayam. Hmm. And when he saw that, he had no fear. He called us in the middle of the night and said, I had an accident, but don't worry, Swami was there. Oh. So we know that for sure he's there. And okay. also the, during the cancer that he yes. got it in 2021, oh. he had a fracture uh, in his uh, hip. We didn't know why. And then the fracture, then we had to go to the hospital. And then from there onwards, the fracture was fixed. After it's fixed, after the operation is done, they said it's a cancer that caused. Then I knew if that didn't happen, that breakage of his leg, I mean the hip, then we would not ever know about the cancer. What do you say to others who will have never heard of the name of Sai Baba, when they know that you're going through difficult times, the loss of a child, four-stage cancer for a loving spouse, what can you tell them that makes, that might help them that you know that you're not the doer, that Sai Baba's in control of your lives in a very beautiful way? I could tell a very good answer for that. I had a friend who was a professor in Winnipeg, and he wrote to me that according to classical scriptures, God only will appear as a form of vigraha, I means statue. He will never appear in person. I wrote him saying, no, who are we to control God? He can frame any form. And then he saw what happened to us when the girl died. And then he wrote to me, seeing how you behave, I have full faith in Baba now. So he that is what is our, our, our behavior that should really promote uh, the others to believe in Baba. And he is, uh, he became an became... excellent devotee and he is a Sai Central member as well as a, yes. um, a organizing person. And he has, he is always with Swami. Your first visit to Prashanti Nilayam, I, I guess that's where you went. And 82. Your first, and your first darshan with Sai Baba, can you tell us about your reactions to those experiences? We were in a crowd sitting, and um, I think our first interview was later on. No. But not on that 82, 1982. But I was always telling that, uh, I don't know, I, I don't see Swami, and I don't know what's happening, but I do everything else, and I was always complaining. <laughs> and at that time, he told him, uh, he had always interview. he has always in touch, Dreams. because he was teaching in Swami's school. He used to go every year to teach in university. 15 years, yeah. So, so he had more access to Swami's and Swami's teachings and to be in Puttaparthi. So he told him, your wife's always complaining. Tomorrow, I will see you. <laughs> you, you know, I want to add something to that. The moment we went in the car and saw Puttaparthi run the right turn, tears came down our yeah, eyes. I cried. I cried I, like anything. The minute I saw the Puttaparthi sign, I wept like, <laughs> I said, we are at home. We are at home. We are mother's home. I was expecting Swami is going to come and say, hey, Dr. Partha, come on, how are you? But nothing happened. He didn't even look at me. <laughs> I think it was your daughter-in-law, Savita Partha, who told me something about a ring in you. Is it what I think it is? Uh, when I came to know about Baba, uh, I started meditating. And in the meditation, I have in my meditation, Baba at the center of a lotus with 12 lotus petals. Yes. Uh, and that's what I, she didn't even know that what I was meditating. She used to joke that you found a new way to sleep, you know. But what happened was, in the second interview, Swami said, I'm going to give you something. And then he materialized the ring and put it on me. I had already tears, so I could not see well. Uh, I went out and saw that it blew my mind. 
it was 12 lotus petals with Swami in the middle. Yes, then it really did something else. When my eldest son's marriage, my father-in-law was lots of diabetes, you name it, he had. He was not supposed to take all sorts of food. He stuck a friendship with the cook and he ate all he wanted. And then evening of the wedding, he had a co he was in coma. So I, I didn't know it's very inauspicious to have a you know, senior person die just on the day of wedding. So I quickly prayed to Baba. Baba said, take the ring and touch him on the forehead. I took the ring, touched him on the forehead. Then he shook like this when I touched that. And then within a short time, half an hour, he became conscious. Uh, but the ring broke. It broke? It broke. Oh, that's too bad. So he took the whatever. I, is. <laughs> I think that means there's a bigger, nicer ring waiting for you. Uh, yes. That, <laughs> that, that, that tells that he was the reason for he was getting up. And then in the last interview when we had, Swami said, oh, this ring is bent and I will make a good one. I put a gold room on it. He materialized and gave me another ring. And, and Parta, I know you went many times because you were teaching. Did you teach yes. at the university? Yes. Every year I used to go. I used to write to Professor Mahajan, who was the head at the time. And uh, he will uh, tell me what I should. I have taught physics. I have taught chemistry. I sometimes talk about cancer, biochemistry, many, many subjects. You know, I love to go and teach there. Subrahmanyam, Subrahmanyam, Chanmukhanatha, Subrahmanyam. Subrahmanyam, Subrahmanyam, Sainata, Subrahmanyam, Siva, 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 Subrahmanyam, Arhara, Arhara, Subrahmanyam, Siva, Siva, Arhara, Subrahmanyam, Arhara, Siva, Subrahmanyam, Siva, Charavana Bhava, Subrahmanyam, Guru, Charavana Bhava, Subrahmanyam, Siva, Siva, Arhara, Subrahmanyam, Arhara, Siva, Siva, Subrahmanyam. Being the president of this Sai uh, Society, I always end up singing that song to close oh. it. Well, it's a wonderful song. It's one of my all-time favorites. Yes. <laughs> Before we come to an end, how did these two beautiful people come to the site of Sai Baba in the first place? In Buffalo, there was a small group of people sitting and singing bhajans once a month. Then we used to attend to that. At that time, somebody gave an, a, a, a little paper and saying that Sabha Sai Baba bhajan will be in my house. So please, all of you come. It was very close to our home, so I said, okay, we'll go. So we both went. That's how we knew who is Sai. My daughter passed away in a swimming accident. So I decided that uh, I have to go somewhere to pray. There is no place to pray anywhere in Buffalo. It's only once a month people get together. And it's mostly uh, with the food and everything else. Mm -hmm. So it was not like a prayer. So once I went to Sai Bhajans and I felt like this is the place I want to be. Well, this, that's really nice. Yeah. yeah. From there onwards, I was longing to go every day, but it was only once a week. Well, in your heart, you could be with them every day and every hour of every day. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know how you learned that because we all learn that. Baba saw what is going to happen, I think, and he came into our life six months before. So when this happened, we had something to lean on. Well, thank you both very much. Many, thank many you. Ram. Thank Ram. Ram. It, Baba. It's a lovely, it's a lovely experience for us to be with you for a short time, even though it's a short time. <laughs> so I hope and pray that we see and meet sometime soon. I hope if you ever come this side, please let us know. Very good. I'm not too far away, just about yes. five hour drive south. Another, yes. Yeah. Well, thanks again. God bless you both in your journey through this wonderful life. And Sai Ram, Sai Ram. Sai Ram, Sai Ram, Sai Ram. Thank you.